welcome to this edition of Lang's Perspective. I'm Mike Miller. My special guest today from Lancaster Park and Recreation, the Recreation Supervisor, Steve Conrad. How you going, buddy? Great. It's always good to see you. Man. Always good seeing you. We were talking about old times for a little bit. Yeah, none of this can go on the air, right? <laughs> none of this can go on the air. <laughs> we won't play any of that. But how you been? Good? I've been very good. It's you know busy time of the year. You know yeah. what it's like. Yeah. You work a full time job, and yeah. you know I'm a high school soccer coach, and you volleyball. Yeah. And by the way, congratulations Thank on you. winning the championship. Thank you. Yeah, we split it with uh, Fisher Catholic and Harvest Prep. So. That's awesome. Yeah, it was it was good for us. Yeah. We enjoyed it. And then you've been coaching a long time. You've been oh my golly! I you know I started coaching when my oldest son. Daniel played U10 select soccer. So that was back in 1992. And I have probably, I was the Fairfield Christian coach for two years. Yeah, yeah. And then I was um, the JV coach at Langster High School. I think it was in 1998. And now I've done it currently as the assistant varsity coach. It's been about five, six mm -hmm. years now. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. been a long time. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I mean, obviously you still enjoy it. You still like doing it. Well, I really do. You know, it's fun being, a, I, I was teasing someone else, you know, you get around these kids <laughs> and the things they say, I have this one, I, you know, I've got street cred now. <laughs> street cred. I got steep street cred. You know, one, one of the kids last, a couple years ago gave me the nickname. I come in, he starts calling me Sea Fresh. Sea <laughs> Fresh. Now, you know what? What? I don't have enough street crib, right? I, I don't have a clue what he was talking about. <laughs> well, that's what we will now call you the rest of the show. We'll be Sea Fresh. fresh. But they, uh, you've been at the parks for a long time. Huh? Yeah, golly. I started in 1992, so this is my what, 21st year. Yeah, It goes fast. Yeah, it absolutely does. I remember the days when... Uh, uh, you used to play, uh, well, we would play racquetball. You would beat me like 25 to 1 <laughs> or 25 to 2 and just make me feel good. That I get two points. But do you ever do play racquetball anymore? Well, tennis? I, mean, I still play tennis a lot. I, well, I don't during soccer season because I play in a Tuesday night league. But, yeah, I play tennis every week, you know, once a week. Uh, my old body just isn't what it uh, used to be. And I, you know, I think a lot of it is, I remember playing Kurt Swearingen. You remember oh, yeah, Kurt, a yeah. good vo a racquetball player. Yeah. I had a backhand once, and I heard this loud pop, and it was my lower back and um, uh, it's getting worse and worse as I get yeah. older. <laughs> oh, I understand that. Uh, but boy, some good times playing racquetball. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Good, good group of people up there at the courtship. Yeah, I remember that. That was uh, yeah. that was enjoyable. I mean, it, I wasn't very good at it, but it was fun. Yeah, uh, I had a ball. I enjoyed it. Um, a lot of activities going on. Of course, we're in the middle of Fair Week right now. And oh, yeah. You know, I've been or parking cars. You know, Wednesday was Senior Day, and um, Thursday, yesterday was Kids Day. And I was there a little bit today, but a bit kind of running around. Um, what beautiful weather. I mean, mm -hmm. we have filled our lot up quick than I can ever, you know, usually on senior day, it seems like by three o'clock, maybe right. at three, four, it was full by one o'clock. I mean, just great weather. The fair board has to be really pleased with the crowds and the weather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, have you, Remember your first fair? Do you remember the first one you went to? Here? Oh my golly, you're Mike, you're testing me. You know, I, I am 59 <laughs> years old now. You know, I don't really remember my first one, but I, I just, I remember going with friends, you know, and, and uh, the same place, I'm going to Pierce the Sugar Waffles uh, and, uh, and getting all those. And, and of course, you know, the, 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 the cane, the, the, everybody tried to throw those rings uh, on the canes. Uh, and, and then when I got older, and, and uh, one of my best friends, I don't know if you know Dave Brentstill or not, but mm -hmm. uh, we used to always, we, I think we spent all of our money, they used to have the video arcade. Yeah. and um, Just some really good times, of course, you know, in high school I was in the band and right. uh, you know the band show always has a lot of memories and uh, some I'm not so good because it rained and you're marching on that muddy track and then you had to dry clean your uniform but yes yeah, a lot of really really good memories of the fair I think I could close my eyes and I know where I'm walking out yeah, exactly <laughs> do you ever bring any of your um going to OU and, and uh, being in the band there, did you ever bring any of your friends up? And well, not usually because we were always, you know, in the middle of season or whatnot, but I, I did come home, you know, a couple weekends, but no, very seldom did I bring friends back up, you know. Yeah. The, um, well, I, I know you're busy, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, Coming up, uh, Pumpkin Hike, uh, October 26th. Absolutely. You know, that started in 1986 um, by actually a teacher by the name of Sandy Dow. Um, Sandy mm. taught, actually when I got out of college, I substitute taught for her when she was raising her kids. And she took a little hiatus from, from teaching, I think, to raise her kids. And she got involved with our nature ed program. So, you know, I need to, uh, hats off to Sandy, because a lot of the things that I do, sand in the park, the pumpkin hike, mm. you know, some of our pancake breakfast, Sandy actually started. Uh, but it started back in about 1986. Uh, maybe a couple hundred people went through and, and just maybe 70, 80 pumpkins. Mm -hmm. Well, that has grown to now we have thousands of people come through. We get about four to 500 pumpkins, and the wow. majority of those are carved. And just a tremendous program. It's amazing how it's grown. and and. The buzz around town, you know, you run into people, oh, I love the, uh, Pumpkin Hike's my very favorite program. 
No, did they let people? Um, did, can you carve pumpkins there too? They charge to do it. Or oh no, actually, you, you know that's it? almost as big a program as the the pumpkin hike itself. The hike goes from six thirty to eight thirty, and it's on October the twenty sixth. Um, but we actually do pumpkin carving on the morning of the 26th, at about 8 o'clock, if you come to Alley Park and go to the, the barn that we have, mm -hmm, right. and you can't miss it, um, just come in, you can carve as many pumpkins as you want. You can carve all 400 if you like. But, no kidding. Um, last year, Mike, we had so many, and, and I don't know if you're familiar with our, our barns down there, we got this big, long metal barn, and a uh, little trivia for those of you that are longtime Lancaster <laughs> residents that might remember uh, Farmer Brown's chicken. Yes, yep, and they used to I have do. their chicken coops out on Route 33. Mm -hmm, yep. That's one of the when they tore some of them down, we kept them and then we no we rebuilt it, and that's one of the old chicken coops. But anyway, that was full of people. We had picnic tables. We've got some of our trailers. It was full of people. We actually had to move some of them over to the other barn that we had. Wow. I, I'm I'm guessing there were well over 100 people in the course of time that came to carve pumpkins. Wow. That is neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's some really awesome, <coughs> my, my wife dearly, dearly loves it. You know, we were talking, you know, your wife's an art teacher. My son had her when he was here at Fairford Christian, and um, he gets his artistic talent, I think, from my wife and her <laughs> sister. She, one year, she did um, a Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. Yep, yep. Now, when she was Carla, what in the world is that? And when it was lit, it was so cool. And really? It's, but so you get these kids come up with a unique design. Mm -hmm. Some people just come out with some drills, and there's an eye, there's a mouth. <laughs> you know? um, I would never do that. <laughs> and then one year we had, um, and I, my mind, it just slips me, but we had the gentleman who had set the world, get us book a world record for the fastest pumpkin carving. He's been on the Jay Leno show, wow. and he lives in Baltimore, Ohio. And he was down, and he'll carve a pumpkin in like 30 seconds. And the, the phenomenal artwork. So oh, we get all kinds. Nice. And uh, if you've never done it, I would really recommend bring mm -hmm. the family. It's a great free family event. And again, that's on uh, the October the 26th. 26th. Right, yeah. The pumpkin carving will be at 8 o'clock. And then the hike itself will be at 6.30 to 8.30. You go around Lake Loretta. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, obviously in the dark. And it's it's lit by nothing but the jack-o'-lanterns. Wow. And then you can end up behind the Goslin Nature Education Center. We have bonfires. Um, you know, we have concessions where you can get hot dogs. And, you know, we have hot yeah. chocolate. We'll get some yep. apple cider. And, um, you know, it's all by donation. So it's, it's a great, great fun. That's that's it. And is October 26th out of Saturday? Is that, uh, that is a Saturday. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, if you're just tuning in to today's show, uh, Langston Perspective, I'm Mike Miller, my special guest, Steve Conrad, the Recreation Supervisor for Langston Parks and Recreation. Um, Olive Dale Craft Bazaar coming up. Well, that's a big one. Um, you know, a lot of people think, I don't want to join Olive Dale. It's a nursing <laughs> home. It's an old folks. Huh? It's a recreation center. Yeah, it is. And it's for people. 55, you're not quite yet there. Uh, I will be 57 in December. Well, there you go. Yeah. You can join. <laughs> and if, if if your wife Debbie's not 55 yet, then she can join, you know, piggyback on you. But um, it's a recreation. They have line dancing. There's a wellness center there. Um, if you like playing cards, it's there. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do, pull. A lot of great activities. It's just an active place to be at. But they are having a craft bazaar mm -hmm. on November the 16th. It is from, I believe, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the director is um, Carla Young, and she wanted me to tell everybody that there are still room for vendors. So if you want to have something at the craft show, um, then call Carla at Olive Dale at 687-6655, and they will give you all the information. Uh, but the one thing I always say about Olive Dale is there's three F's, food, fun, and fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there'll, there'll be food there. It'll be a lot of fun. And, and you know, what a great way maybe to pick up you ever go Christmas shopping and I don't know what to buy for them? Uh -huh, yeah. Here you find something really unique, maybe, and mm -hmm. you can start to get an early start on your Christmas shopping. And that's coming up November 16th. Absolutely, November 16th. And a lot of what they're doing, Mike, is for a fundraiser for the Olivedale bus. The, right. the bus that we currently have, it is getting older, it breaks mm -hmm. down a lot, and Olivedale takes people on some really cool right. trips. Yep. Yep. And so they're trying to buy a new bus. That, that's uh, and it's a great event. It's, it's a lot of, I guess you hit it on a unique items that you can get. Oh, absolutely! And, you never uh, know what you're going to find at a craft yeah. show or a bazaar. Um, and, and if you want more information about Olivedale, they have a really great website. It's olivedale.com, um, and you can download their newsletter. It's it's in a PDF form and um, just a wealth of information. But if, if you know if you're 55, you want to get involved, uh, what a great place to do it. Um, 
One of the, the areas that we always talk about, and I know you're busy with, um, just the nature programs in general, just all the different things that are going on. Well, we're really fortunate. I have a girl by the name of Trina Thornton that um, she was an education major and she is in charge of my nature ed program. Um, her staff that she has hired, or most of them are all ex-school teachers that have retired. Um, as a matter of fact, we just picked up a new one, Bonnie Calderon, who was a teacher at Liberty Union, hmm. or Amanda. Anyway, she was a teacher. She just retired. <laughs> Cover them all. That's yeah, a, you know, <laughs> actually, Bonnie, one of the county schools. <laughs> yeah, she taught. I know that. Yeah. Actually, she used to work for the parks right out of college back in 1978. She was one of my playground leaders um, when I worked part time. But anyway. They do a phenomenal job. Uh, they have a Saturday in the park program for the families. It's mm -hmm. always the second mm -hmm. Saturday. Uh, they do birthday parties for people. Uh, the springtime's extremely busy. Um, for those of you that have kids at school, you know they have their ROE programs, right. Resident Outdoor Education. We provide that for the schools. Um, the schools were not traveling as much because of budgetary right. reasons, so we mm -hmm. would go to the schools and do them. And, um, just really a, a great way to learn about nature. Um, they always make it fun. A lot of times I think the kids are down there and don't even realize they're, they're learning because um, it just, it's just so much fun. And I think it's one of those things where later on in life, like, you know what, I learned how down in Alley sure. Park. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, when, you, when you do all your programs, do you ever go any other places to another county and say, hey, that's the, I'm going to steal that idea? Well, you know, I don't have the corner of the market. You're absolutely right. Um, you know, our new superintendent, Steve Gayfield, he came from down in Mason, Ohio. Uh, you know, Dave Bogeer, when he was here, he was at Brunswick and Defiance. And so, yeah, we pick up stuff from all over. Uh, you know, why reinvent the wheel? And, and a lot of it, to give you an example, uh, I had someone that came up to me one teaching art class. It was um, Carly Young from uh, yeah. Sherman, who was the art teacher. She does a phenomenal job. Um, our Nature Ed program got started by a girl that... Uh, we used to have a nature ed program, and the girl had to quit. And that's yeah. I, I'm not a nature per person per se, so we it kind of fell away for a while. Well, I had a girl come up to me and said, "You know what? I think I could do that. I used to be an education major." Mm -hmm. She started it back up, and then she hired Trina, and she moved on to other things. And so, yeah, a lot of things come to me from what other people are doing, and, and people come up to me with ideas. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, right now that uh, we have. Uh, uh, Langster Alive and their adult athlete, you know, so we mm -hmm. have uh, flag football out at um, uh, Miller Park right now, the kickball leagues, and now they're coming to us with maybe sand volleyball, you know, yeah, so. That's a good sport. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, people come to us with ideas. Sure. We work with them to make it happen. What, do you ever go to conferences anyplace to get out? I mean, just to go to other states? We have in the past, yeah. Um, you know, to be honest, sometimes it's hard because you're so daggone yeah. busy. Um, a lot of times you go to the, the OPR, you know, Ohio Parks and Recreation Association conventions, and, and they have seminars and workshops during those. And, uh, and to be honest, uh, and if you've been to a lot of those things, mm -hmm. you learn more during lunchtime sure, talking no, to other absolutely. people in the area than yeah. you do the actual classes. Um, but yeah, you know, and um, the Ohio Parks and Recreation Association, once you're a member, they give you a directory, and everybody that's a member has their phone numbers, their ad, so you can contact them. And I get calls all the time from other recreation people, you know, what do you do for this? Because right. you, you, you always wonder, am I charging enough for this, yeah. or am I charging too mm -hmm. much, or how do I do this? And um, yeah, it's a great resource tool. But yeah, we, we, we interact with other departments, yes. You ever have an idea that's come to you and you're just thinking, what in the world? <laughs> Why would I do that? I mean, just something that just you you know is that, that that we couldn't do that. Well, yeah, I mean, and that happens all the time. One of the biggest things I get uh, was, well, I, we've got a lot of people interested. Well, you show me a list of people. Yeah, uh -huh. Well, that a lot of people is maybe two or three. <laughs> um, but if if there's a genuine interest. Um, and I tell people a lot of times, we don't have the personnel, if, but I will work with you if you're willing to be involved and help, right. you know, so we can't do it all ourselves. You know, sure. we operate on a, a shoestring right. bridge. It's, yeah, it's tight sometimes. We have a small staff and, um, you know, I do a lot of the organizing. I have people run the programs for me. Right. And we talked a little bit off there about the levy that goes till 2017? Yes. Yeah. We just passed one in, in 2012 and we couldn't operate without that. Uh, it, it's 0.15% of all taxable income and a lot of people might think that is for big projects or to do something new mm -hmm. and it really it, it just allows us to operate uh, right. and you know we get monies from grants for big projects. Um, we do generate revenues for you know rentals and, and mm -hmm. a lot of our, you know, our soccer program kind of pays for itself because of the monies brought in from that but um, yeah, money is tough. Um, 
the superintendent really, really has to know what he's doing, yeah. and it's a juggling act. Sure. And he does a great job, and I think we all really are very prudent in the way we spend <laughs> the city, the taxpayers' money. I think one day I stopped by to see, um, maybe I was coming to see you, but I ran to Bill Sands. And he was working on some piece of equipment. <laughs> He's yeah. like, what are you doing, Bill? And he yeah. said, oh, I'm going to fix this. I said, why don't you just buy a new one? He said, no, no, we can do this. You know, we can fix this. And Yeah, uh, boy, Bill's missed, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Bill was with the parks for a long time. Yeah. One of the most talented guys I've ever Absolutely. met. He, He's an artist. Mm -hmm. you know, he told me when he was in high school, he got kicked out of art class because he wanted to do it his own way. So he made money by doing, <laughs> he made money by doing other people's art projects for him. Um, yeah. But, but if you go to our nature center and you look at the beautiful hickory floor we have, mm -hmm. Bill planed it, tongued and grooved it, made it all himself. Um, you know, he's responsible for the restoration of the covered bridge, right. for the log cabin. We have how, and, you know, he's just one of the unique guys. He's a mechanic. He can do it all. And he's a super nice guy. The, the first time I met Bill, um, he was working at a dealership as an auto mechanic. Yeah. And he had a long sleeve white shirt on. And I thought... Either he just doesn't want to touch the. I mean, he doesn't. <laughs> but he was right, and he never got dirty. Yeah, he never got dirty. I said, I can't. I mean, I you know, I walk in the garage and I smell something on me. Oh, it I'm the be, same way. You know, and I just, and I could never. And we we got to be pretty good friends. He was. Uh, yeah, and he's one of a kind. Of, and we say he's retired. Bill doesn't retire. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, he's heavily involved in his church. He does right. sound systems yeah. and, and lighting and you name it. He does it. Uh, what a unique individual. We were fortunate to have him on staff yeah. for quite some yeah. time. He's a good guy. Absolutely. Um, Another program that is coming up, uh, we're in the fall right now, but coming up in December is Santa in the Park. Boy, you know, that's that's one of our bigs, one of my favorites. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, before I started working in the parks, I knew it was going on. It's like, but you get busy, you never yeah. go out. And, and I really wish I would have when my kids were younger. Um, but yeah, our maintenance crew, and of course Bill was heavily involved mm -hmm. back then, and it continues. We turn Alley Park into just a, a winter wonderland. All the twinkling sure. lights on the lake, and everything's lit up. And um, you know, Santa and his friends come and visit, and uh, the kids just have a ball. It's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful program. You mentioned Trina, our nature coordinator. She's also a disc jockey. And oh she, really? And she, does, she does parties and dances for people, and so she has her equipment in, and so she's playing music while people are coming in. And that's neat. Um, yeah, it's the 12th, 13th, and 14th of December. And, um, if you know, if you, it's not if you if you're our age mm -hmm. or older, and yeah. you, you don't have kids at home anymore, don't let that keep you from sure. showing up. Yeah. You know, because yeah. and we also have, um, you know, the bonfires where you cook hot dogs, and 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 usually we have. Um, um, Christina Cook, who owns um, Ohio Valley Kettle Corn, and they come out and they sell kettle corn, and it's it's the best I've ever tasted. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is there a charge to get in? Is it's free. It, how long does it take to walk? You walk as long as you want? Or well, it, yeah, it's entirely up to you. A lot of it depends on how many people show up. What you, you, you walk through, and, and as you're walking the path, we have these arches that are lit up, and so you mm. walk this tunnel of arches, and you see all the wonderful lights, and you go on the deck of our nature center, and Sand and his friends are talking to people. When that group's done, they go out, and you can go down to see our nature education center with all the animals in the basement. And then the next group comes in, and um, it's, you know, we can get probably close to 100 people in there easily. That was a question that somebody did ask me. Can you rent the nature center? Absolutely. Um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head because I don't deal with that aspect of it. Uh, I don't know what the costs are. But if you go to our um, website at www.lancasterparks.com, and go to the Charles Alley Park. I believe we have a copy you can download. It's a PDF file of the, the mm -hmm. contract agreement. But yeah, a lot of people rent them out for weddings, right. uh, for birthday parties. Not so much birthday parties, but mostly weddings and receptions. And it's a great location. Oh, it's I mean, beautiful. It's, it's just a, beautiful. A super, super location. Yeah, if you're thinking of doing that, um, just, just remember it, it'll hold for our pancake breakfasts. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually have 16 tables with eight around them, so that's about 140 people or so. Um, and if you want to leave space for mm -hmm. obviously dancing, it's going to sure. cut down on your seating. But you know, for a smaller mm -hmm. wedding, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Looking over Lake Loretta, and, and Trina does birthday parties. People can can rent birthday parties out there, and um, depending on there are different prices for different levels. Right. Um, you know, you can even for the older ones do canoeing mm -hmm. out there. You mentioned uh, pancake breakfast. Uh -huh. Touch on that just a little bit for those people that are, may not know anything about it. Okay, well, we have three of them during the year. One is our maple tapping festival in March, and and it's obvious with the title. It's we tap the trees, and so we have a pancake breakfast. Um, then we do another one in April for the friends of the parks. Actually, it's their breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, I organize it for them and help run it. And then the antique tractor uh, show, which was just this last August. You know what's kind of ironic 
uh, you know, you never know what path life is going to take you. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I graduated in 1970. I started out as a music major. I was going to be right. a band director. Yeah. And I changed to recreation phys ed my junior year. And so I, I, there weren't any phys ed jobs available back in 1978. The schools were cutting back. So I subbed for about two and a half years, and I got into the restaurant business. And I think I did a pretty good job at it. I, you know, the Wendy's on East Main Street hadn't made a profit until I got there. I mean, I know it wasn't just me, but it, mm -hmm. it, it, it changed around. And it, I, I think I did a good job. I didn't like the restaurant business. The yeah. hours were crazy. Hours, yeah. And if you have a family, you never see yeah. them. And it's hard, hard work. But I learned a lot of business skill. So when I had the chance, I was actually interviewing at Pickerton Elementary because I went back and got an L.Ed. certificate when the job opened mm -hmm. up um, for the park. So I took the job there, and guess what I do? I run concession stands, I do pancake <laughs> breakfasts, and, and I'm back in the restaurant <laughs> business. Back in the restaurant <laughs> business. That's, when, when you you know think about all the things that are going on in, in parks and recreation, has there been one maybe individual that kind of has affected you in, in working at the parks department or just working in the, in the city of Lancaster? Well, I don't know. I, I think one of the things I enjoy is relationships. Mm -hmm. And there have been so many people. I mean, I had the privilege back when I got out of college to work part-time. I worked for Don Boehner. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he's the architect of Langster Parks and Recreation. Um, I had the privilege of working with Dave Bogear. You know, Dave and I are just about the same age. So, you know, the friendship was there. Mm -hmm. You know, Mitch Overton did a wonderful job yeah. in a couple years he was here. But the many, many volunteers, um, but the hard part also is, as the years go by, many of those wonderful volunteers pass away, yeah. and you really miss them. But, yeah, you know, I, I think probably my favorite thing in the parks, I'll be honest, of all the programs, I love the Fairfield County Tennis Tournament. And I know that's special to you and your oh, family. Yeah. You know, yeah, the, the kids yeah. played. Yeah. Um, but it, it's really been a joy working with Rod Ishida. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, Rod was my high school tennis coach. Um, Y'all can do the math. I graduated in 1972, <laughs> and that was Rod's first year, so he was probably 21 or 22 then. Um, but I still, Rod still works with yeah. us and helps us. And, of course, now Gary Elake and all the wonderful tennis community. I, I really enjoy that, but they're just all you can't. Yeah. Uh, you just can't pick out one or two people. There's been just so many of them over the years. The, uh, I know the tennis tournament has grown quite for a while there. It was kind of down a little bit, and then kind of gotten back well, up to I, I, It kind of got up. Uh, we did something different this year. We tried to do singles in June, mm -hmm. right. and then we did uh, the double. The doubles was huge. The singles. Oh, I people were older. They don't have to cover as much of the court. <laughs> I'm right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so the singles was down. So we're going to have a meeting after – you know, my um, soccer's over, and mm -hmm. Gary's done with the girls' yeah. tennis, and, and, you know, a lot of things to think about. Number one, we need a sponsor. Um, you know, Fairfield Federal, is, is ch and, and I'm, I want to thank uh, Judy, well, first, Ron Keaton, and then Judy Root and all their people. for. We couldn't do that term without Fairfield no, Federal. Absolutely. But, you know, times are tight, and they have to invest in what they get the biggest bang for their buck, sure. and, and they, you know, they do the Friday night bandstand. So we do need a, a sponsor for next year's tournament. Uh, but we need to discuss, do we still want to split it? Do we want to put them back together? Do we just want to do a doubles tournament? Um, so all of that will happen here before the end of the year. But you're right, it's a wonderful program. Now, do you have a committee for that, or do you just sit down? Well, it'll be it? myself. It'll be Gary Elick, Rod okay. um, We may get Jason Roush involved, yeah. who's a tennis coach for Fisher. Right. And, um, just, just a lot of the people that are really involved just to, to brainstorm. You know, yeah. Everybody has good ideas. It's a, it's a great event. It's an oh, event. I love it. It's it, a it, lot of fun. It's a, I used to play before many knee operations and more weight, but I used to play <laughs> uh, quite a bit. Um, one of the other things that I, I know people are this time of year, and we, we kind of skipped over it, um, leaf collection. Oh, my. <laughs> and it's just, uh, I'm going to let you talk about that because I, I can't imagine how you do this. I don't. Well, you know, it used to be, and, and if you're like me, I despise, with, I don't like naked trees. I like leaves. <laughs> but when they all fall in the yard, you know, I'm constantly, I don't like raking them. So yeah. I try to keep on top. I mulch them, I mulch uh, them, you know, and then I, I throw them in the trash can because I can throw all these tiny little pieces. But can you imagine taking care of all that in Rising Park with all the trees? Uh, Years ago, when I first got here, we take our ball diamond rig tractor, and we've got another tractor, mm -hmm. we, put, we put these huge blowers on them. So we blow them into these big piles, and for the longest time, we actually had a baler. And we ah. would come through, and we would bale the leaves. Yeah. Yeah. And people would call us way before the time and say, hey, when are you going to have these? And they would come out, pick them up, and people would use them for their gardens. They would, you uh, know, some yeah. of the older, older houses, they would mm -hmm. put them around their uh, yeah. basement walls yep. for insulation. Yep. 
Uh, well, the old Baylor finally gave up the ghost, and uh, we don't have that anymore. But now we do have a truck that sucks them up and throws them, uh, yeah. you know, just kind of like yeah. the street department used to do. And uh, but it's it's a, a very laborious mm -hmm. laborious task. Yeah, I, I understand. I used to put mine in a pile and then light them on fire, and then neighbors, you know, neighbors said I couldn't do that anymore. You know, I really miss it. That was so much fun. My grandmother lived down in Rushville, and it was a family event. We'd yeah. rake leaves, yeah. and they had these big tarps, and we pull them over to the the garden, we burn them all, and, yeah. and of course. Um, you know, when we were kids, Mike, you used to be able to put them in the street and burn right, them. Right, yeah, I, I know. And, and it's, you know, you tell somebody, they're like, what? You know, How old are you? <laughs> yeah, but, I know, you know, but there's nothing like the yeah. smell of burning leaves. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. With your busy schedule, I, I know um, your kids are all older now. And um, what do you do when you, you're not running around 80 hours a week? When does that happen? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I throw it out there. But, you know, um, I can remember. We just lost a really, you know, you talked about people with relationships. We just lost a really good friend, Pr Fritz Prosh, um, mm -hmm. that passed away, and he was the pres president of um, Friends of the Parks for many years. And um, I remember one time Fritz says, what are we going to do when you retire? How are we going to find someone that's willing to work 24-7? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. sometimes it seems that way. Um, and, and I'll be honest, I'm very lucky to have a wife that's understanding. And you yeah. you got to be oh, the same yeah. way. You do your yeah. job and then go into yeah. to volleyball. Um, now, she's also involved in the high school yeah. with the drama program and everything. But... Uh, I'll be honest, if I wasn't busy, Mike, I could probably be one of these people that would lay on a couch with a remote control. Really? I, yeah, I could get very lazy. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, see, I would, not, I would not think of that, you at all. I would yeah. not, I would just think you get, you know, I've got to go here, i got to go there, i get there. Well, you know, it used to be that way um, until I turned almost 60, yeah, and, yeah. And, and your body just gets tired. I know, I know. Well, Steve Conrad, it has been a pleasure having you on, giving us an update. Once again, phone numbers, websites, people Okay, can go yeah, to. if you want to get a hold of Lancaster Parks and Recreation, to find out what's going on, um, go to our website at www.lancasterparks.com or you can call our office which is located at 1507 East Main Street and it's 687-6651. Thanks again, partner. Enjoy it. You know, Always, fam. We'll see you someplace down there. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Lancaster Perspective. I'm Mike Miller. Remember, until we meet again, let's make a difference. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org.